Okay, what I'm going to do here is to work through the CAD test um, and just show you the steps that you could have taken to complete each of the three tasks, the part, the assembly and the drawing. Um, I'll start with the part, uh, which is specified like this. Um, let me see if I can zoom in on that at all. So we've got the information there. Um, and I'll, I'll work through that now. I'll go new um, and I'm being careful to choose millimeter part. Of course we could change that later but it's easier just to set it up now. Um, so that's going to load up. Just looking again, while that loads up, just looking again at the, the part itself, what I'd be doing at this stage is coming up with a rough plan. Um, the way that I look at this part is that it is a swept circle. So there's this, uh, the main barrel that's uh, come out sort of grey colour on this picture. That is almost exactly a sweep of a circle. So I'll start by doing that um, because that's the main body of the part. Then I'll probably add in this handle if I can, and I'll have a think about how to do that. Then I'll put in this uh, hex um, hexagonal extrude cut here. Um, and then finally, I'll think about the detail of this um, kind of fluting on the on the body. But that is it's the kind of thing that looks cosmetic to me. So I'm going to leave thinking about it until the end and I'm going to try and get the main shape sorted. Uh, so let's start a 2D sketch. Um, it's probably not going to matter too much what plane I draw on. Um, so I will draw here. Um, the, the things that I know, first of all, there's a line which is approximately, which is horizontal and which is 200 millimeters long. So I'm going to put that in zoom out so I can see it. And then there's another line here somewhere um, and that one I can see is 30 millimeters long. And I want to get the positioning of this line, this this 30 millimeter line right, because um, then I can just join them up with an arc and then I'm confident the sweep will work reasonably well. Um, so that line, there's a 30, it's 30 millimeters long and the length from the top of it to the, the main axis, which this one will give me, is 60. So I'll put that dimension in from here to here, should be 60. Um, and then the other thing that I can see from the drawing is that line is 230 millimeters from the origin uh, in this dimension. So I'll do that and 230. Um, and then what I can do is to put in a tangent arc from here to here and quite neatly that ends up being um, exactly 90 degrees so everything seems to be working well there. And I can see down in the bottom right here that I've got a fully constrained sketch there. So that looks good. Um, I might want to come back to it um, if, if I've forgotten anything but for the time being I'm going to say that sketch is finished. Uh, what I want to do now is, uh, for a sweep, obviously I need the path, which I've just drawn, and then I also need the profile. Um, for the time being, I'm just, as I explained, going to draw a circle as the profile, and I can see on this um, document here that the circle is radius 10. That's this number here that I want. Um, that should be fairly straightforward. Uh, and I've made a classic mistake there, which is to use diameter 10 when I'd said radius 10 out loud. And the reason that I spotted that is because it doesn't quite look right. This is going to be a too narrow a, a cylinder or a circular sweep. So just go back and edit that. Um, So if the radius is 10, the diameter has to be 20. And that looks more like the kind of thing that I can see in the in the picture that I was given. Um, so now I'll 
create that sweep. The profile has already been chosen, as you can see, and now I need a path. Use that path there, and that looks about right. Um, so I'm happy with that. Next up, I said I was going to put in the handle. Um, what I'm going to do here is actually to create a new plane. Just looking at it, um, the hand. Well, there are two different ways I could do this that I can think of. First of all, I could sketch uh, on the end plane here where I sketched the circle earlier, extrude along, and then take the same sketch and cut it five millimeters. So first of all I'd extrude it 105 millimeters and then cut away the end five millimeters. But instead, just um, to keep things nice and clean in case I want to move things around later, I'm going to um, create a new plane. So we will say create plane offset from plane and then I want to find that plane there and from there I want it to be uh, five millimeters in the other direction, so say minus five. I'll just have a look and see if that's worked. Um, that's gone the wrong way. Or no, that's gone the right way, that's fine. So I can click the tick. And I'm happy with that. Now I can sketch on that new plane. And what I want is. Um, uh, this CC shape here, and um, I, I kind of have to look at this picture here to see exactly how that's aligned. The long axis of that shape is is in the same direction as the upward curve of the sweep. Um, so let's start trying to draw that. The first thing that I might do is to create a line, I think. It's, um, it's going to be tricky slightly to get this exactly right, um, this shape. It's, it's not obvious at first how to sketch it, to me at least. Um, so I'm going to make that 10 millimeters. Uh, that's one of the dimensions that's marked on the, on the diagram. And then the, the two circular ends have radius 12. And that tells me, I would say, um, um, what I'm going to do as well now is to project that geometry there um, so that I have, I hope, now a center. And I projected it as construction geometry. That's what I was doing here. And the, the thing that I want to be able to do is to set that dimension to be 12. Uh, finally, this thing should be symmetric about the origin vertically, so I'll go from there. Uh, and there's lots of different ways you could do this. Um, if I make that 5, that line is now in the right place. Uh, it's where I want it to be. Um, now, let's draw two arcs. Hmm. Again, what's the best way to do this? Let's make a construction line which goes up from here five millimeters. And now I can turn off construction, make a circle centered on there that just snaps to there. Um, uh, what I've done there is press F7 so I can see everything cut away to the plane I'm working on. Um, and I'll have another line from that point there, straight down 10 millimeters. And now I think I should be able to trim this circle. And I'll put in another circle, again based on a construction line. And this distance is uh, the, the length of that line is 5, it needs to go to there. Turn off construction, create the circle. Um, so that's 
how I've decided to make that shape. You could also, of course, have created it by, first of all, just creating this upper five millimeters here, this curve here, and then mirror across uh, two center lines. You, you can take advantage of the symmetry of this shape to get it in the right place. Um, you'll see here that there are two dimensions still needed. Um, I'm not too worried about that, but let's just see if we can find out what they are. Uh, so show all degrees of freedom. There's something that is movable over here. Um, ah, so that's the kind of thing that can happen. Uh, that that the um, the thing the shape can become quite distorted. What I'll do, I think I can fix that probably by putting in a tangent constraint here and another one there, perhaps. And now that's fully constrained, so I'm happy with that. I'll finish that sketch, and then I will extrude it. And this time I'm just going to use that drag to get it extruded in the right direction, and the drawing tells me it's 100 millimeters. Um, so that looks good. I'll hide this work plane, turn the visibility off. At this stage, I would say you've, you've sort of really got 40 to 60 percent of the of the work done from creating one sweep and one extrude and that's taken about 10 minutes so far um, the next thing I'm going to do is to create this hexagonal um, extrude on the end here again you need to be good I think at projecting geometry in construction mode um, one thing that I'm going to use uh, here, you, you can do it in various ways, but if we use the polygon tool, everything becomes very easy. Um, except that I've done it there, still in construction mode. I'll turn off construction mode. And that is done. except that's not quite right. I need the side of one of these to be 8, and as it stands, they're 10. So instead, I'm going to uh, use the polygon here. Um, just make sure I'm snapping to that line. Say done. And then if I dimension this to be 8, uh, the whole polygon changes shape, the whole hexagon changes shape. And that now looks pretty good for what I've got on what I can see on the diagram that I have to produce. So I'm going to finish that sketch and I will extrude it um, and I want an extrude cut of 20 millimeters. Okay, uh, now we're starting to look pretty good. The last feature that I can see that I don't have is this fluting on the sweep. And the way that I'm going to get that is to actually go back. You, you can imagine if you, um, one of the things that's recommended in the, um, in the task itself on the task sheet is that you model the main functional parts of the wrench and then you add in the details later. I've now got the functional parts of the wrench done. Um, all that I've got left to do is cosmetic features. And so if you've got this far, you would get most of the marks for this part. Um, but what I want to do finally is to go back and look at this sketch here of a circle. Um, and I need to add in something that looks like this. Um, get the dimensions correct. So now I'm looking at that uh, detail A, that this length here is 2. And I guess I should also note that it's probably symmetric about the center line. I'll create that center line as a construction line. So now I can put in a dimension that just says this needs to be 1, and then everything is um, kept symmetric there. And the last thing is that this line needs to be 0.5. Uh, that looks good. 
There's still one dimension needed according to the specification, but I think I'll find that's just that it doesn't know the length of that center line. Now everything's fully constrained. Um, now you can go in and put it, you, you can see from the diagram um, that there are four of those. Uh, you can see that most clearly probably on section BB, but you can kind of interpret it from the, the three-dimensional image in the bottom left of the problem. What I'm going to do actually is put in a circular pattern. If I hit the right keys. Um, so the circular pattern needs some geometry to pattern about. I'll choose that, that and that. And then it wants some kind of an axis and I'll choose the center of this circle. And at the moment I've got six in the pattern which is too many but if I choose four they're all in the right place. Um, finally that's looking good just kind of cast an eye around and make sure I'm happy with it. Trim away the bits that I no longer want. And that should be fine. So if I finish that sketch I get that fluting visible um, it's not so visible depending on exactly what light I show it in, but if we just go to view visual style um, wireframe, you can see that that fluting's there pretty clearly. Uh, visual style realistic, that's less obvious that it's there. Anyway, I'm happy that I've got that part now. Um, I've got all the details that are on the sketch. Probably the last thing that I do is just to have a look and see can I pick out any dimensions that I didn't use. Well I didn't use these two here but I don't really need them as long as this line's in the right place and this line here is in the right place that curve is is defined anyway. I used that hundred, I used that five, I set up that shape okay and I think I did that shape as it's written there um, and I had this hexagon as it's written there. So um, I am pretty happy with what I've done there. I think if you've done something similar to that, you will get all the marks on this task. And that's taken about 15 minutes. Um, so you've got to be reasonably quick to get this task done in the time. Uh, and finally, I will save that. I'll make a new folder and I'll call it um, test um, recap and I call this Ben underscore Lishman underscore whatever my student number is I don't have a student number so I will just go with that um, it's automatically going to save as a dot IPT I guess um, I might just add in task one so it's clear that that's what that's for Okay, uh, let's go on now. We need to go on to task two. And I've created a standard millimeter assembly. Uh, and the first thing that I need to do, again, let's just take a look at the problem. Um, I want to build this balance bike. It's just worth taking 30 seconds to kind of plan out a route. The main structure of it is this bicycle body item one. So what I think I'll do is I'll put that in grounded at the origin and then I'll put everything else in uh, relative to that. Uh, probably next on go the wheels and then I can put in the axles and the wheels should be pinned at the axles but free to rotate. Then I'll try putting in the seat and finally I'll put in the handlebar. Okay. Uh, let's put in the bicycle body and I'm just going to right click and say place grounded at origin and that's done and I'll hit escape um, that looks fine happy with that next uh, bicycle wheel and I'm going to want two of them so I'll just drop two into the picture now and then I'll start working on constraining those. Uh, first of all, this axis 
goes on that axis. That looks fine. And then the second constraint, um, if I just close uh, constraint this axis to that axis, and I'll apply that um, just to show you quickly. I'll move that wheel out of the way temporarily. Uh, this wheel is now. Uh, free to move. It's, it's locked on its axis, but it's still free to move in that direction. So I need to find a way to constrain it in that direction. What I'm going to do actually is pick out the um, this plane here, the XY plane of the bicycle body. Well, I want that to line up with the YZ plane of that wheel, and then everything will line up nicely. So we'll just do that. Uh, constrain the sorry XZ plane of the body to the which one is this? Constrain. I couldn't find quite what I wanted there. The XZ plane of the body to the YZ plane of the wheel, and that's in the position that I want it. Okay, I'll apply that. Uh, next, we'll constrain the center of that to there, and then we'll do the apply that and do the same trick again. So the XZ plane of the body is constrained to the YZ plane of the wheel. Uh, that's pretty good. These wheels now stay in place, but they turn freely. The body itself doesn't move, and that's useful to me. Um, so now I'll keep on placing. Um, Let's go for the front axle. Uh, just drop it onto the picture. Then you can probably imagine you're going to constrain again um, the axis to the axis and apply that. And I can actually just constrain this face to that face flush now. Um, and that's in the right position. Keep on going. Uh, constraining the rear axle there to there, apply that face to that face, flush, apply. Okay, um, wheels and axles done. I guess this is about 50% of the bike complete. You could sort of ride that now. Um, but let's put the seat in place. I just want one of them. The easiest way to do the seat is uh, by constraining these two um, pin the, the holes where it's pinned to the holes where it's pinned on the seat. Sorry, on the it's talking and working at the same time there. This is the lower hole goes to the lower hole on the frame. Apply, and the upper hole goes to the upper hole on the frame, apply. Let's just check. That looks like it's in a good position. And again, you can start to see what's left is that it still slides that way. And you should now be familiar with the solution to that. The wheels are fine, so I'll close them up. I will constrain the XZ plane of the body to the YZ plane of the seat. And again, I was sort of looking as I was doing that just to make sure things were going to go in the right place. That looks fine. Uh, the seat pins go in next. I'm going to need two of those. And they're pretty straightforward. Once we've done this much, everything goes quite quickly. Um, that face to that face, flush, apply. So all the pins work in the same way. Um, and now I will constrain this pin, that hole, apply, apply, and there to there, flush, apply.
good. The seat now looks fine. That's all in the right place. Last things to do are the handlebars and handlebar pin. Um, the, the handlebars can be a bit trickier. You've just got to think a, a, a second, or I've just got to think a second about how to constrain them. We can start constraining the hole to the hole is good, apply, um, and I can constrain, I'm just going to move this up now so that I can um, get everything to work okay. I can constrain this face to this face and that's pretty good and I can apply. The problem is they still rotate around and I don't really want that. Um, you, you can choose a few possibilities here. I guess maybe one slightly more elegant one than some others is to pick the YZ plane of the... let's see if this works anyway. I've got a few ideas about how to do it. If I pick the YZ plane here and the front face there and I constrain the angle between them to be zero and apply that then what I'm saying is um, those two planes have to stay parallel to each other which is effectively saying the handlebars have to stay in that particular orientation. So that's worked okay and then the last thing that I'm going to do is to place the handlebar pin. I've only got one of them and I will constrain that and that and finally you can see pretty clearly from the diagram that it sits most of the way down so make a reasonable guess that the lower face of the head of the handlebar pin sits on the um, cutaway face that I've just put it on. I'll apply that and I'm pretty happy. I think that's that's the balance bike put together. Obviously the last thing that I'll do just like everything else is to check um, first of all do I have all the parts? Will I put in a body, two wheels, two axles, the seat, two seat pins, the handlebars and the handlebar pin and I think it looks pretty similar to, to what's seen there just reread the brief should show the mobility so fixed parts should be fixed and moving parts should move well the moving parts here are the wheels everything else is fixed um, the, the handlebars are fixed that I'm told that uh, let's just check one more time the wheels move nothing else really moves so that seems fine uh, file save as and I will call this Ben Lishman one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, task two, and that will automatically save as an assembly. Okay, um, again, if you've completed something like this, you will get 100% of the marks for this problem, or very close to it. Uh, the last thing that I need to do is file new. We've recommended bsi.idw. It's uh, this problem here. We recommend using the template bsi.idw, which I've just done, and import the part at 4 to 1 scale to have it appropriately sized on the page. Just lining this up, what I guess I'll try and do is to import the part and, and make this my base view, and then I can project that view and that view. Uh, make a section on this view here, and that'll give me this this section AA here. Make a detail of the base part that I imported, and that will give me a detail B here. And make a, a 3D projection and uh, make that uh, shaded, and then I should have everything I need. So, That's the part that I need to import, and it was recommended to import it at 4 to 1. And that's the view of it that I want. Um, that view there matches up with uh, this view here. So that's useful. Uh, so I will say, and I've imported it 4 to 1, I'm happy with all of that. Say OK. 
move it to about where I want it to go. Next I'm just going to get these projected views set up pretty quickly. Uh, there's one projected view out there and there's one projected view down there. Um, and I want that projected view. Right click and create. So this is starting to look pretty like what I wanted. Um, I guess while I've got it in mind I can just make this one here. I double click there and I choose that shaded option. If you hover over it you'll see that it says shaded. So that's now as I want it, which is good. Um, I'll produce the section view and the detail next, I think. Uh, the section view comes off this part here and uh, if I go like that and then come back like that and continue, I don't quite get the section that I wanted. Uh, so instead what I might do now uh, is just to put on a uh, center line there. Sorry, didn't do that right. But on a center line, uh, not quite sure why that doesn't snap. But I'll right click and create, and that looks fine. And uh, now I hope I might be able to make that section slightly more easily. We choose this. And I can choose to make my section from there to there. Um, and that's now looking like the section that I wanted, um, just comparing it across with what I was given. So that looks promising, section AA, happy with that. And I'll do my detailed view. Um, I want a detail on there. Just notice um, you've got two options, the fence shape, that's what kind of a shape do you want to to have for your detail. Mine is round and it's got a circular smooth edged cutout. And we're getting right into the the minor details there. It's centered on something like that. I think that's pretty good. Um, I wonder though if I should have... I'm just going to undo that and do it again. Uh, I wanted a 10 to 1 so I might as well get that right. 10 to 1 something like that. Okay, um, that looks fine actually, that looks pretty much like what I've got in the in the diagram here. So just roughly I've now got the six views that I want. There are lots of these um, center markers and center line bisectors. So let's go through and put those in everywhere now and then we'll finish off by putting in dimensions where we need them. Uh, center lines and center line uh, center marks go there, there, Uh, no, sorry, that's uh, needs a center line by sector. I think those are all the center marks that I'm going to put in. So now we'll go for center line by sectors, and I choose this one and this one, this one and this one. In, in some ways these are details. You you wouldn't have lost a huge number of marks for not putting them in. But at the same time it's a good idea to include them on your 
um, drawings in general, just for clarity. What I might do with that one is just to extend it out. It's nearly there. And again, I'll just drag that one out a bit longer. I think that's now most of what I wanted by way of uh, center marks and center line bisectors. Uh, let's start putting in some dimensions now, just going around view by view, trying to find the dimensions. I'll start with this projection here. It has one dimension marked on it, and it's from there to there. That's 33.5. Uh, that's come out as 33,5, which I probably rather it didn't. Um, how do I change that? If I go styles editor um, under dimension here in the styles editor I can change comma to period. Um, yes I'll save that and comma to period uh, save and close and now everything comes out with a period. We won't mark you down if you um, if, if that comes out as a comma, um, but it's just worth knowing how to fix that. Uh, that's everything done now. That that for you there in the top left is now as it is on the specification, so I'm happy with that. Let's go back and I'll start putting in some dimensions on here. Uh, we've got 2.3 and 6.85. Uh, that looks fine. There's a dimension there of 3.65. There is a radius on there of 1.75. And the length of this line is included. That now looks as on the specification. Uh, two more dimensions over here that diameter and that radius now this one takes a bit more thought that diameter that diameter slightly out the way. Again, I'll put it near where it is on the actual specification. Um, and there is one more, which is that one there, which is 0 0.5. And I think that's now everything that's on uh, the sheet I was given. I've just remembered or noticed, by the way, that on so far on, uh, I haven't thought at all about the uh, text that goes in here and the various pieces of inf of information that I can give. I'll come back and look and that look at that at the end. Um, I'll finish off doing my dimensions though. So one point eight there. There is that this width is seventeen point six five. And this is two point ah interesting two point seven five or two point eight. I guess if I go to there 
I get the 2.8. Okay, um, so that was a slightly tricky thing. Again, we probably wouldn't be marking you down for um, ending up with uh, 2.75 there instead of 2.8. It's not the clearest uh, piece of the drawing, actually. I'll work on that in future. Um, I am now happy that that main drawing, the last thing that I'm going to do is just to edit the field text. Um, you might end up playing around with this a bit. I can make the author Ben Lishman and I know that the company is actually uh, comes up in this large box here where it says task 3 so I will uh, make that the same. I'm just going to make all the part numbers, stock numbers 1. The description is that it's a servo motor spindle. Uh, designer is Ben Lishman. Title servo motor spindle. Um, and I will make Alessio Corso the person who checked and approved it. Again, we want to see that you're able to um, to change the details of what's in the, the uh, field text. We're not too fussy about exactly what it says. Um, I guess I'm still miss missing something that says it's issue one. Let's see if I can find something about an issue number. Maybe it's a revision number. There we go. Okay, um, again, just finishing off, what I want to do is make sure that I've done everything that's on the original sheet. I've got this view here with the section AA and 33.5. got this view here with those five, six dimensions and the detail. I've got the detail at 10 to 1 with those two dimensions in. I've got the section at 4 to 1, is that right? Yes, it is. Um, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 dimensions marked on it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, and I've got this projection with three dimensions marked on it, uh, one, two, three. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, everything looks good, and I will finally save as test recap. And this is task um, Ben Lishman Uh, that looks good. The last thing that I might do is just to go into the test recap and make sure each of those, um, the part, the assembly and the drawing are all there. Um, I'm happy with that and so I would say I had completed the test and I'd submit my files um, and um, leave quietly. Okay. That's how to do the 2017 to 18 inventor test, which is the second assignment in engineering design, ENG underscore five underscore four two four two. Thanks very much.